15 and a half after seven. I mentioned yesterday that I'll be hosting another food security forum on Wednesday, October 12 in Gunnedah. A bit of a drive, six hours from Sydney, a very important event. The purpose of it is to hear again the stories how rapid expansion of mining has affected food security, the quality of our water and the very viability of the agricultural industry. Let's put it simply, if you are watching your land being raped and your water being poisoned, would you wait for some special government commission or would you just say, get out of our way? This is about saving Australia's farmland, about which there is barely any focus. It'll be at Gunnedah Town Hall on Wednesday, October 12, Wednesday week, an 11am start. All roads from Queensland and New South Wales will lead to Gunnedah. The issue of coal seam gas has been in the focus of one parliamentarian, thank God, Senator Bill Heffernan. But of course, Bill Heffernan is a farmer. He's chairing a parliamentary inquiry into coal seam gas. What he's heard is blood curdling. Where is the industry? What's it doing? What are the risks? In a recent Senate hearing, Senator Heffernan's committee was told that mining at just one Queensland site would produce 3 million tonnes of salt, enough to raise a pile 10 metres high and 11 kilometres long. Now, the Senate committee is looking at the impact of mining coal seam gas within the Murray-Darling Basin. Senator Heffernan made the point to the New South Wales Department of Trade and Investment, Regional Infrastructure and Services, a ridiculous departmental name, but that's another story, quote, 11.3 kilometres by 30 kilometres wide, 10 metres high, says Bill Heffernan. That'll be the pile of salt that will be produced from this one mining approval. And he made the point that the mine had been approved in Queensland and said to the department in New South Wales, this is for you to think about because we don't want this to happen in New South Wales, says Bill Heffernan. I wouldn't like that on my landscape, unquote. Now, salt is a byproduct of extracting water during the coal seam gas mining process. Now, we all know that agriculture and mining can coexist, but the whole thing's out of kilter, utterly out of kilter. Bill Heffernan is on the line. Senator Heffernan, good morning. Good morning, Alan. Good morning, your listeners. Thank you for your time. I noticed that this inquiry that you're conducting, that any number of gas miners like Origin Energy are telling you that the impacts of coal seam gas on agricultural land are small and manageable. Uh, Alan, I have to say it's a disgrace what's been allowed to happen in Queensland. They've given environmental approval. What they've done up there, Alan, is the equivalent of sending a man to the moon not knowing how to get him back. Oh, mate, we'll work out how to get you back on the way up there. The, the, the environmental hazards uh, situa- around the coal seam gas haven't been figured out. The CSIRO has told us that it could take 250 to 300 years to repair the damage to the aquifers in some regions. New South, uh, the, uh, the Water Commission, the Australian Federal Water Commission, has said we don't know the answer. I mean, the, 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 the salt problem, and that is correct, out of, out of a tenement of origins, the 7,000 wells, bear in mind there's going to be 40,000 wells in Queensland, they will have 3.5 million tonnes actually of, of salt as a byproduct. They've got approval, mind you, to go ahead with the mine, not knowing what to do with the salt, and to put, put it into so there's no misinterpretation of how much salt that is. They said they'd stored it in approved storage. I said above or below the ground, they didn't know, blind or not, don't know, but it'll be approved. Salt is 806 kilos to the cubic metre, and it stacks at 34 degrees. It stacks something like wheat stack. But if you could square stack it, that 11 kilometres long is, is, is the size of the stack, 30 metres wide, 10 metres high. But because it stacks like wheat, it's actually 24 kilometres long, the stack. How would you like that running up your boundary? There are a couple of uh, companies interested in trying to find a use for this salt, one in the aluminium industry, one in the glass industry. So there is no known solution at this time what to do with the most toxic element to farming and agriculture, that is salt. Absolutely. Just have a listen to this, Bill Heffernan, which I have played several times. This was Liz Hayes on a 60 Minutes program last year talking to the Queensland Energy Minister, Stephen Robertson. Do you know what's put down into those wells? Do you know what chemicals are used? Um, Not uh, not, uh, totally, no. Shouldn't you? Um. Shouldn't you know what chemicals they hydraulically ram down those wells? Well, what I'm assured about is that the processes that they employ are appropriate processes for the extraction of, of that coal seam gas. 
And then it, it just went on. J just listen to this again. It's unbelievable, this. Doesn't that mining fracture the water table? That's one of the allegations that is made. Is that not true? Well, no. no. That's one of the allegations that is made. That is why we've put in place the Independent Queensland Water Commission. See, these are vital things to know before any of this should be taking place. And you don't know. No. So, Bill Heffernan, this is government. I mean, we had protests in the last fortnight, as you know, at Newtown here in Sydney, which is spitting distance from where I'm at this microphone, over the granting of a mining lease for coal seam gas near Sydney Park at St Peter's. Alan, I mean, the community I, told nothing. Alan, I, I have to say that I'm chairing the inquiry. We've, we've received evidence from all angles and all sides, and the lady from British Gas complained that I was a bit harsh on her. Um, I have to say I've been pretty harsh uh, on Wayne, everyone. Wayne Swan has just put her on the board of the Reserve Bank, so you can imagine what public policy is saying in relation to all of this. Well, well, I, I even told the Roma Shire Council equivalent they were a, a bunch of mug managers for what they've allowed to happen up there. This is a typical case of a bureaucracy, and wooden-headed, and the bloke you just had on is, is one of those. He has no understanding of the real issues, uh, but the, the allure of the money, and bear in mind most of the miners, there are one or two uh, responsible miners, Alan, like Santos has said to their great credit, they will not go onto a farm where they're not invited. Now, now British Gas took the opposite view to that. No, we're going to enforce our legal right. But to go ahead, the allure in Queensland was $40 billion of development in, in Gladstone, um, uh, as a, the remedy for all the farmers, they say, is money. I say because we took evidence in Queensland of contamination. See, that's the promity. When the remedy comes money and the poor farmer has got an overdraft, then he's going to sort of surrender his land. What's that do for our agricultural future and for food security? Some of them, Alan, will do that, and that is absolutely right. They're tempted by the money. Mm. Let me remind you that the science for the future, but if you look, we can think 40 years is half a lifetime. Well, half a lifetime from now, 40 years from now, 50% of the world's population will be poor for water, uh, a billion people unable to feed themselves, 30% of the productive land of Asia will have gone out of production, and we're losing 1% of the world's agricultural land a year now due to a series of reasons, everything from urbanisation to desertification. The food task will double and 1.6 billion people on the planet could be displaced by 2050. Now, I can assure your listeners that by 2050, the little patch in your backyard, if you're in the city, will be more important to you than the garage up the front because at least you'll be able to grow a little bit of tucker there. Food, the, the food task is not being modelled globally. We're not putting research into it. We're putting trillions into defence and only a few billion into agriculture. Absolutely, Alan, in the future, what's in, the, in your fridge is going to be far more important than what's in your garage. And that's what this is all about. These miners have a 35-year life. Mr Volte, when he retired from Woodside Petroleum, said his greatest career achievement was in his time to prevent coal seam gas mining. So we've got a lot of work to do. What do you do when, when you're driving in a fog? You turn your lights on and slow down. And that's precisely what governments should do about coal seam gas because we haven't got it figured. We already know this contamination of the aquifers. We've taken that evidence. And all they'll say to you and all APIA, the industry body, will say, oh, we'll, we'll remedy that with money. You won't remedy a, a contaminated aquifer with money. Over in Bakersfield in the US, uh, the, the municipality there is suing the local miner for $2 billion for the contaminating the aquifer. You said of farmers, which is why we're going to Gunnedah for a public forum on all of this, on food security, the issue you just raised, agricultural land being raped. You said of farmers, quote, they're fairly emotional and they're bloody well entitled to be. That's correct. Now, one farmer talked to you about losing 30% of his land value. And this bloke who's the Director General in New South Wales of this ridiculously named Department of Trade and Investment Regional Infrastructure and Services said, I don't think there's evidence before you that I'm aware of whereby the stroke of a pen in relation to New South Wales that has occurred. I mean, who is going to buy your farm if it's plonked as at Ackland it is in Queensland right next to a gigantic open-cut mine on prime agricultural land or where someone's got a coal seam gas licence to drive through your property? Who's going to buy it from you? Alan, this is a serious, serious problem because most people just take the food for granted. Go to Coles, Woolies, Aldi's, wherever, um, and, and that's another problem. We won't get into no, that. No, right. But we take it for granted, the food. I can assure your listeners that food is going to be the most important commodity. 
By 2070, China's going to have to feed its population of 1.8 billion, half of its population, from someone else's resource. That's another threat to our sovereignty, is foreign governments buying up foreign, uh, our assets yep. and excluding us from access to them. We've, the only way to win this argument is to inform the public of the importance of the, of the food task. That's why I'm talking to you. But okay. see, you take on that. I mean, thank God for you. You've got this company, Medgasco, which has got gas exploration licences covering 5,800 square kilometres around Lismore and Casino. That's an area that produces beef, dairy cattle, sugar cane, nuts, fruit, beautiful rich chocolate-coloured soy that you could eat. You've got a coal seam or a petrochemical plant to be built in the Felton Valley, spitting distance from Toowoomba on the Darling Downs, which basically is the breadbasket of Queensland, and governments are acquiescent in all of this. Well, the attitude of that minister that you you played earlier is the attitude. When the CSIRO tells you, when the National Water Commission tells you, uh, they don't know the answers. I mean, we've got a serious problem with governments that go ahead giving approvals into the unknown with an unknown outcome. I mean, no one seems to have picked on to the fact that they're not making any more agricultural land and we are losing 1% of the world's agricultural land per annum. But you've got you've got just come close to town here. You've got seventy two wellheads out Camden Way, prestigious suburb of Sydney, AGL, telling no one about them. A group of chemicals, BTEX, associated with coal seam drilling. I mean, the BTEX in all of this is is uh, benzene, and you've got quite clear statement from the Department of Health that benzene is a known human carcinogen causing cancer. The E is ethyl benzene. The International Agency for Research on Cancer says it is probably carcinogenic to human beings. No one in government wants to know about it. Alan, this has turned up in some of the adjoining aquifers in Queensland. Allegedly, I mean, they will try and kid your listeners that you can drill down into these things and it won't contaminate an adjoining aquifer. They do. And I haven't got time to explain to you why, but I know every technical detail in my head. In the, in the, in the US, and, and what we call the Wild West there, we've got our own Wild West now. In Texas, they've banned BTX, and it's about bloody time. I mean, these are serious, serious issues. And I mean, everywhere from the southern highlands in New South Wales to way out in the backcountry in Queensland, this is an issue. We know of one bore, one draining, running bore in Queensland that's turned blue because it's been contaminated. This is one of these running boards. And, com- quite, and coming back to your point about salt, I mean, salt can permanently destroy farm land. So not only have we got the salt, we've got the chemicals and un- other pollutants introduced into the aquifers, we've got land being raped, which is prime agricultural land, and the leadership of this country and these states stand by and does nothing. Alan, it's, it, it, for the miners, I mean, and there are some real cowboy miners in the industry who just want to mark out the tenements, realize, work out what their value is and flick it to someone that will mine it. They're after the money. The average farmer, and, and I, I, I own up, I'm a farmer, um, and we've had a bit of wonderful rain just now. But, on, yeah. but the average farmer, he doesn't want to die the richest bloke in the cemetery. The average cocky, the average farmer, he wants to leave his farm in good order, hopefully to one of his kids, with the gate swinging, the fences in good order, the pasture in good order, and, and, and ha- having thought, well, I've done a good job, I've supplied all that tucker to the rest of the world, and now my son can take over. I mean, the attitude of that compared to maximising the uh, share price for the benefit of the shareholders and, you know, a bonus for the directors and the chairman, etc., is what this is, the, dif- the big difference is in a vocational sense. Absolutely. Great right. to talk to you. All right. Thank you, so, time. Thank I mean, you so much for your time. Yeah, we will talk again. Okay, thank Good you. Good on you. There is that brilliant Bill Heffernan. That's why we've got the Food Security Forum. Wednesday week, October 12, in the middle of the Liverpool Plains. And I know this broadcast is going around Australia. Drive there and be heard. Something's got to give in all of this. 11 o'clock, Wednesday week, in the Gunnedah Town Hall.